Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm filming my very first mukbang. Um, and I don't really know how authentic this mukbang is because this is one day old food. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, I'm eating some hibachi chicken. Well, actually it's Chinese food. Um, the place that we went to go eat was a hibachi restaurant. And I'm really trying not to make a mess. But if you know me, you know that I eat like a toddler. So... I'm gonna try to keep it cute um, while I eat and talk. Um, I'm eating a little bit of a leftover quinoa that I had. And then as far as from the hibachi place, I had, um, it's like chicken with veggies and white rice um, and then water and then I got some extra sauce cause <laughs> you know, your girl what? got what? sauce. In New York, I'm in New York. I did them. Okay. Sorry. Um, anyways. <laughs> Um, let's just jump right on into the video. So today, my little, um, mukbang, is that how you say it? Mukbang? Mukbang? I've heard a lot of different variations. I'm not really sure which one is correct, but, um, we'll go with mukbang. I wanted to talk a little bit about something that inspired me a lot today at church, um, and something that I feel like a lot of people that I've spoken to recently, it being, you know, the beginning of a new year. A lot of people that I've spoken to, uh, friends and are just in passing have been struggling with, um, you know, what God really has for them this, um, this new year. Um, struggling with anxiety about the future, um, plans that they've made, um, and maybe those plans have fallen through, um, and what God, you know, really desires out of them this year and whether or not he's going to come through with his promises how to deal with um just the uncertainties of the future um and wow i'm really like making a mess already and i haven't even eaten anything anyways jeez it goes in anyways so i think what i have to talk about is pertinent to a lot of people like I said, it being the new year. Um, and it's hard to deal with not knowing what this year has for you and really wanting the best for yourself, but being unsure as to what God's direction is. And so I wanted to direct us to a couple of different passages that I've been sharing with some friends um, and ones that, you know, I'm really thinking, I know rather, that God is using as ramas for me this coming year. So one that I've held on to for the past almost two years is from Joshua 1 9 and it pretty much says do not be discouraged um do not fear do not be discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go and um that really stuck with me for a time that I was feeling a lot of discouragement uh, based on my circumstances with school with life in general um, not being where I wanted to be and just struggling with that you know and God's word has such a way of providing comfort in those times. I want a really big piece of broccoli. Um, I'm not going to really go over the context of each of the passages. I do want you to read for yourselves just to get a little bit of context as to what these passages are talking about because I think it's very important not to just pick something out of the Bible and not know what God's word is saying surrounding that specific text. So it's important that even though I'm telling you these scriptures that you go back and read them for yourself and hey, God might be telling you something else from that same chapter. He might be directing you to a different verse or he may just be directing you somewhere else in the Bible. So either way, his word is always true um, and it's not based on interpretation because God's word is going to tell you exactly what he means 
but in terms of comprehension sometimes it's you know it can vary from person to person in our ability to comprehend what he's trying to say you could understand what I got from them and how I know God has has used them to pretty much show himself to me and give me the support that I needed at times when I was feeling discouraged like I mentioned earlier um that passage was very much of a rhema for me because I was going through a lot um I was at that time my roommate had gone home and so I was kind of at the apartment by myself struggling with um just just uncertainty about my future a little bit of depression um feeling anxious about certain things and where God was headed uh taking me next and and you know not really being able to see that outcome made me feel anxious and it made me worry and God's word clearly tells me that I don't need to do any of those things and so I'm grateful for the comfort that he gave me by way of his word um, in those times that I really needed it. The second verse that I wanted to talk to you guys about was um, one that my pastor actually went over today in church and service. And it's from Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And it pretty much says, I'll read it verbatim. And then, like I said, go back read the chapter get some context but it says for i know the plans that i have for you declares the lord plans for welfare not for calamity to give you a future and a hope and that just gave me so much peace like when i was reading it um i was like dang like god already knows like at the beginning of this year i'm sure that each and every one of you watching this video has so many plans as to what you wanted to change you know 2019 new year new me no uh for me personally it's a new year but i'm the same me um i'm following the same god who gratefully does not change as much as i do um but i'm the same person i just i've grown up um i've seen some of the mistakes i've made and 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 want to make better choices for myself and when i read this i was like dang like as much as I want to sit here and try to plan out my life and you know God is not opposed to us taking action and making sure that you know we are aligning ourselves with the plans that he has but our say is not the end all be all and at the end of the day God knows the plans that he has for our lives he knows what he wants to do in our lives who knows how he wants to carry out those plans and um, when you read his word and it tells you exactly what his idea for prosperity means over your own life. It should give you so much peace, so much joy. And if it doesn't, just don't take my word for it. Like, like I said, go back, read the context of who he's talking to, who these words are directed towards, um, and what those people are going through for him to have said, you know, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you. Um, My pastor made a really good illustration and he talked about prosperity in the sense of walking and going towards the light. Um, in this example, the light is Christ. And as long as we're <clears throat> walking and moving towards Christ as the light that he is, our prosperity, which is a shadow, will continue to follow us just as a shadow does. Now, if for one moment you turn around and you try to start chasing after prosperity, guess what? You're never going to capture it because shadows, just like prosperity, is always going to be a moving line. It's it's never going to be something that's stationary. And as soon as you feel like you're prosperous in one aspect of your life, guess what? Something else is going to pop up and it's going to feel like, oh man, I just finished that, but now I have all these other hurdles to try to get through. When God is saying, no, like, look at me. Direct your eyes towards me. Let me give you comfort and peace and joy and all of those things that you desire. And on top of that, you will gain that prosperity that you're so earnestly seeking after. Earnestly seek after me instead. And I, and I, I love that depiction. And then I also thought on top of that, like, as you walk into the light, you know, your shadow, not only does it follow you, but it gets bigger and bigger. So you're there walking into the light. Um, your prosperity is constantly with you and not only is it with you but it's growing as much as you're walking into Christ's light and so you know when God tells us that he has 
prosperity for us, it may not just mean money or material things, but things that are actually beneficial to the growth of our character and for who we are. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that in this new year you're not going to face trials and tribulations. Um, I said something to a friend that, you know, it really shocked me that it came out of my mouth because, you know, your girl's always saying something profound. But anyways, um, I said to her, you know, change doesn't ever come about without pressure. And if you think about a diamond, like, you're never going to get a diamond without the pressure of the external forces on, you know, that material to make it into a diamond. And so expect change but and expect that things are not always going to be maybe the way that you thought that they were going to be planned out but also expect that at the end of that pressure process at the end of those obstacles that god is going to make you prosperous in whatever it is that he's set out before you the last um passage that i want to share with you before i go is from this verse is really close to my heart. I've shared this a couple of times with some friends recently. And it's from Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. And it's probably one that you're familiar with, maybe like some of the other ones that I've also already mentioned. But this verse says, Be anxious for nothing, but with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts in Christ Jesus. And I love that because... As soon as I feel anxiety building up in my heart, that's literally the verse that I go to. Like, anxiety pops up, be anxious for nothing, you know? And sometimes it doesn't even take me reciting the whole verse in my heart, but just knowing that very first line, God is saying, he's literally exactly telling us what to do and how to carry out our lives in such a way that is aligned with his plan for us. If God intends to meet every single need known and unknown in our lives what do we have to worry about what do we have to be anxious about you know and i was thinking about that in church today like there's so much things that i have to do plan and and you know and i'm here thinking about how is this gonna manifest how am i gonna go about this what people do i have to chase down to do that how am i gonna get through this next step how is this gonna get paid for where is this money coming from like and god is saying whoa pump every single break why are you anxious right now did I not make sure that everything else that you wanted to be taken care of was taken care of abundantly? And something else that really stuck out with me from my uh, message last Sunday was that just because God did something one way in the past and he made, you know, a way out of no way doesn't mean that he's going to operate in the exact same way going forward in life. And that's not to say that it's, you know, God is not still working on your side. It just means that Expect the unexpected, expect surprises, expect God to do a miraculous thing for yourself, for you this year. Um, and know beyond a doubt that you don't have to be anxious for anything, that you don't have to be discouraged, and that God has a plan for your life to be prosperous. Um, and, you know, it's important to hold on to those rhemas because those are God's promises, his word that he cannot fail on. God cannot fail and he can't depart from his word. He's already said it. It's already in his book and therefore we can rely on it. It's not like, you know, your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your mom or your dad or your husband or your wife. These are God's words that are unmovable. And so in times that you're feeling anxious or discouraged or uncertain about your future, um, overwhelmed with planning and all the stuff that you have to get through, take a moment, take a deep breath in. Remember that this moment too shall pass. And above all else, know that God's got you. Well, that's pretty much all that I really wanted to share with you guys. Um, this was a pretty short mukbang. Um, and my food is getting cold because I can't talk and eat at the same time. Sis, finish up this quinoa and this white rice because <clears throat> your girl's a little fatty. And my chicken, um, with the extra sauce. And I will catch you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye, guys. Mm. Did I even say grace? Oh my gosh.
I'm trash. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm